Hi there friends and welcome back to my tutorial series for RimWorld. I'm Icon and this is episode 9 and today we're going to talk about animals. So last episode I had this sheep join event and as we see here we have now two ooze and ram so we want to work with those. So since RimWorld version 1.3 the whole animal system has been reworked for the sake of everything, I'm just going to pretend as if it was uh, would have been like that since forever. So I'm still running no mods here because the mods I really wanted to use were not updated for version 1.3 so far. So we're still full vanilla on this one. If anything changes about that, I'll announce it and put it into the description window below. So to work with animals of course the most simple approach is to check out who has the highest animals rating level four level one level four level five and level zero so ray is out of question because she's only a temporary guest here so bubbles will be my animal person as far as i can see because she's the only passionate person about this job so we're going to put handling on top of her uh, many duties she already has, but that's just life. Okay, so animals come in two different flavors. Animals which go into a pen, like the sheep, and animals which don't go into the pen, like the Yorkshire Terrier, Tom, which is living among us. You have to treat them differently and you have to handle them differently, but first and foremost, we have to build a pen real quick to get the sheep under control because otherwise they will run away from us so let's see we got some wood to work with so we're going to create ourselves a pen of these proportions here and we're also going to put a fence gate and now feeding corn to tom you know Emmanuel. I'd really prefer you to work on that fence as quick as possible. Thank you. So we got more than enough logs available for the job. So that's not really any issue. But if we don't work quick enough, the sheep will just run away because they have no pen to be stuffed into. It's just like in real life. These animals, they don't just stay because I want them to stay. This has been different in previous versions of RimWorld, so it's quite fun actually. So for this special occasion, I will put Pi and Hubbard on high construction priorities. And now I'm going to select the entire colony once, draft them and undraft them to reset the work, their work um, assignments. Because I did change their preferences and this way yeah, I can't force them to just do whatever seems important right now, so... That's at least my thought behind that. So here we see now Hubbard is working on that pen. There's a decent chance of us not um, not being fast enough on, on this topic, but... Well... We'll try nevertheless. So... Pi wants to sleep. Why that? Okay. Because tired. <laughs> and we get raided by the Finthalor. So, well, this is a typical uh, RimWorld situation where you, where, where everything happens at once. You have this one topic in your mind, you have that one topic in your mind, and uh, all of a sudden you'll get an attack. So there's a decent chance that we're not going to finish this pen in time. So our newest enemy here is even featuring the first gun in the game. But luckily, no shooting experience whatsoever, so this should be not too terrible. This dude is also attacking us immediately. So, with enemies that come with ranged weapons, I like to have a different code of conduct. So, we're going to seek cover here. So, I'm going to walk over here. And now, people with guns go right here standing right next to a wall like uh, Emmanuel does right now is being in cover so therefore it's pretty good for Emmanuel and I'm going to put Pi next to this uh, this wall here so now 
Pi and Emmanuel have pretty good cover, and as we see here now, they both shoot. You can notice they uh, they are leaning out of their alcove, and now the rest is just one shot in the head. Well, lucky us, very short raid, <laughs> and <laughs> let's just keep going, shall we? I don't want to uh, want I don't want them to work on these things. Okay, he left us a piece of component and most importantly an auto pistol. So while the auto pistol is not the best we weapon in the world, it would be good for us. But I don't want to give those refugees guns because at the end of the day I don't know if these guys are going to betray me or not. And it's really bad if they have guns when they want to betray you. It's way easier to handle them if they are all running around with melee weapons. At least that's my take on that topic. So we have this guy here now. Well, I haven't built up a crematorium yet, so I'm going to give him a grave. Usually I don't. This particular special scenario. This enemy receives a grave. It's pretty important to get rid of that. Um that body as quick as possible because it's just uh, bad for the moral of your people if there's uh, bodies lying around there. So we now have a mental breakdown on Hubbard. Sad wandering. Sad wandering is just a state of mind where you're losing the control of your colonists totally. They just wander around but they still autonomously eat and sleep. So you don't need to worry, they won't starve while losing their mind, but they they won't be they won't be controllable until, until the sad wonder is over. There's a lot of different uh, types of mental breakdowns in this game. It's uh, up to you to discover them all, you know. So for now, I want to... Well, maybe... Yeah, pen needed, I know. I'm working on it. Okay, we're almost there, and, okay, wonderful. So the last thing we'll need is a pen marker, which uh, designates this uh, area as a pen, and then we're finally good to go. Okay, so now this area is designated as a pen. We now see how much nutrition grows there per day roughly. It's an estimate. It's no exact number because there's uh, there's seasons, weather, and maybe there's a fire inside there. You can't never say it's going to be exactly this amount of uh, food growing there, but it's an estimate. So Bubbles and Ray can now go over there and uh, rope those sheep. This is a process where they go over there and grab those sheep and bring them into the colony. I think I have one person. Yeah, Emmanuel can't just uh, bring that last few. Okay, so now we have our animals under control. Now you know how to build a pen. And we're going to talk about these things a little bit more thoroughly, of course. So, okay. Let's uh, get that chunk away. It's in our way here. So the animals can't cross the fence. And now the real interesting question is, is this pen large enough to, to sustain these? So in the food tab, we can see we have a nutrition growth of 1.48 per day. And the consumption now of these sheep is 0.54 per day. So I'd say we are pretty well off we should be having no problems whatsoever. In a pen, you can also tell your people to automatically cut unwanted plants. So I allow here these check marks uh, designate which, what's not allowed in your uh, pen. So we're cutting away burnt trees, dandelions, oak trees, and poplar trees to make sure there's a large growing spot for, for the grass animals want to eat. So this way we are now able to have sheep. What for you might ask yourself. So sheep provide of course wool. 
We can here see in the information screen how much wool, how long it takes, and how much wool per year, how much that wool, uh, how much that wool is going to be worth. You can also see in this window the direct readout of the stats of that material. Really good stuff. We also see that how much meat a animal here yields, what kind of leather it yields, and yeah, lots of stats, but mostly impo most important are the hunger rate, which uh, depicts how much nutrition the, the animal needs per day. And well, these uh, productivity stats are really important for livestock, which go into a pen. You can configure your pen here in the animals tab and check mark which kind of animal would be allowed in a pen. This is mostly interesting once you have more different livestock types. You can also create pens for females and males if you want to. And you are able to sort them this way if you don't want to, to have new babies. You can also sterilize your animals here in the operations tab if you want to cut out the chance of offspring entirely. It costs you medicine though. So here in the animals tab now we see what's uh, happening there. We see now these are sitting in the pen with the pen marker one. You can also go over here and uh, well let's see if we can rename that thing. Hmm. Doesn't seem like we can uh, rename the pen marker yet. I'm pretty sure this feature should show up in the future. We are playing right now a beta version of 1.3 because as a matter of fact, every storage area can be renamed as you see here. So I wouldn't be too surprised if we would get a renaming functionality for these pens too. If not, I'd be very happy if that uh, could be brought in. But what about the other animals? So we see here now Tom the Yorkshire Terrier, he doesn't want a pen. He will rather use zones. So right now Tom is allowed to be everywhere. I highly uh, I highly recommend you not to do it like I do it here because uh, animals without uh, any zone assignments are pretty chaotic. So we're going to talk about the zone assignments for the animals in a second though because this is a pretty uh, bulky topic. I want to stay here for a moment longer because here we can see what kind of training the animals should receive. You see here there's tameness. This is uh, once this is trained the animal is part of your colony. Guarding this is a training where you can check mark the animal to follow the master with this one and then it will defend the master while he's drafted if he gets attacked. This is a very inaccurate thing and, uh, well, it's a very unreliable way of getting your animals into combat. Much more reliable is training them attack. Once that's trained, your animal can be released when your colonists are drafted into combat. And here's also rescue and haul, which can be only learned by animals with a advanced trainability. If we check out our friend Tom here, he's only featuring intermediate trainability, which yields you these things. There's also simple trainability, which means the animal can only learn guarding. So rescue, if that's learned, the animal tries to rescue downed colonists and carry them to their beds. And haul will enable the animals to sometimes randomly do hauling jobs, which are left open in your settlement. And it's not controllable. I'm going to say that it's not controllable. But it's a pretty cool thing. Once you have a couple of animals, like five or seven, with the whole ability trained, it's really cool. But how to train these, you might ask yourself, because we're just uh, putting check marks on and off. So once a check mark like this is set up, the next handler will be trying to train that animal as soon as they are up to it. This works like taming works. The trainer will get some food the animal likes and then he interacts and as you see here after the interaction there's a percentile chance if the training was successful or not and a training always has several levels like attack needs two levels until it's learned rescue and haul need more levels until they are learned and these trainings have to be refreshed as well 
So from time to time you have to reteach your animals their little tricks. So basically, the more animals you have, the more handling work is uh, going to be there. So if you want to have animal farms with lots of animals, you should have enough handlers. Especially if you want these animals to be combat compatible animals. So you can basically tame everything here on the map. Everything which is running around here can be tamed. The alpaca, the rat, everything. So you always have to check out if the trainability is none. This is usually a sign that this animal is either not really useful at all and or <laughs> it's uh, meant to be put into the pen. You can also read out which animals are meant to be penned by checking out this uh, list. But for example, the rat is not here in this list, but I think, well, past versions at least looks like that. The rat has also a non-train ability. So train ability none doesn't automatically mean it's a livestock which goes into the pen. Some animals are just not meant to be uh, really kept in your base for anything else. So one thing is also worth mentioning, which I didn't mention here, there's also a, well, there's no more nuzzling on these. Well, animals also can nuzzle colonists and make them happy. The more cuddly the animal is, the better. Cats are, for example, a really good thing about uh, cuddly for cuddly animals. And bubbles is food binging. That's okay. So now that we have uh, these covered up, I want to talk about zone assignments for animals because right now. Tom may roam wherever he pleases, and that's not exactly a good thing, in my opinion. So, I really do assign at least one zone for animals. Most of the time I have two or three different zones for the animals the longer my colonies go. To create a new zone, we go into the Zone tab, and Expand Allowed Area yields this Manage Areas uh, button. And here we can manage our zones, but we cannot also only manage our zones, we can also create new zones. Here we go. So now we're going to rename that into animals. If you don't like the color of it, you can uh, create them endlessly until you get a color which we're, uh, you're happy with, or you're download, you'll download a mod for that. So for animal zones, I personally like to have a general animal zone. This looks, in my playthroughs, always like this. First, I click the invert button, and now you see this whole map is uh, covered in color. Let's like, zoom out a little bit further. And this means this zone spreads all over the map. So if I now allow Tom to be on the animal zone, this is basically the same like the unrestricted zone. But I do this because it's very easy to now go into the clear allowed area. And now I select the animal zone. And now I can simply cut out the zones where I don't want Tom the Yorkshire Terrier to go into. So I will allow Tom to uh, visit the freezer for now. So he's allowed to eat. I also recommend you to forbid these fields from your animals because if animals like to eat live plants, like grass and such, they will also love to gobble up your uh, your crops and you probably don't want to have that. And since the animal bed is now in this room, I'll leave this uh, zone here. And now what happened is we have now an animal zone which just excludes a few areas where I don't want the dog to spread his filth to. Basically that. Also worth mentioning, try to not allow your animals to be where you store your alcohol because alcohol in this game has a nutrition value and if there is nothing else to eat, guess what? Your dog likes to get hammered then and this is really bad. We we had several playthroughs in the past where animals were just uh, flat out drunk. There is a mod for to, to solve that issue which I since then always used but well so another thing I want to do here, I want to shrink that zone a little bit because stone chunks slow down your movement. Therefore, I don't want these stone chunks in front of my houses here because 
this makes uh, the, the passing, passing by of people harder. So we are now at the point where we have our sheep under control. They have a little nice pen where they get some food from and where they can roam. Good stuff. The only thing which I'm not happy with so far is the fact that my animals will be freezing during the winter and let's change that and we're going to build a little bit of a barn where I will also store food for the winter because during winter these poor animals need some food too and during winter nothing there will grow so therefore we're going to build a little bit of a room here I have enough light leather here and there we go I'm going to put animal beds inside there as well so the sheep will then have a little bit of a refuge there there we go and since i got hay right now available i'll yeah i'll do this there are two ways how to do that and look at that our first sheep is pregnant the you is now pregnant and you see here it takes six days for the children to be born if you are interested in that in general you can also check out the gestation time here this is uh, giving you an information about that and now we will have baby sheep so there's one thing which is quite useful to know here in the animals tab there's an auto slaughter menu where you can configure how many of which animal you will allow for the colony how many sheep in total how many of those male and female with this instrument you can keep your uh, livestock amounts under control because as you see here with uh, the sheep only needing six days to uh, produce offspring you will eventually run out of sheep quite quickly uh, out of room for the sheep dang <laughs> you know what i mean so that's why i will assign some auto slaughtering thing here already and we're going to say i want to have exactly this setup of sheep and yeah well Let's keep a, f a couple of females more and we're going to slater to slaughter all the male sheep. This is one setup, but not really a good one, I think, because I just made it up like that. You should always try to come up with the ideas that seem good to you for yourself. But now we're going to talk a little bit about taming, uh, a little bit more about taming. So there are also animals which have a chance to attack the tamer when they fail. As you see here, grizzly bear, timber wolf, rhino, magislav, that's all quite uh, appealing animals to, to tame if you want to have a, a combat compatible animal park. So there's always some risk involved, but there's also good news. You can just uh, check mark the follow master while the master is doing field work, hunting or taming animals. When you check mark this, all the animals which are under control of the respective master, which can be configured here, will follow that person to, to the taming process. And this way you can minimize the danger of these things a little bit more. But I personally would never try to automatically tame something like a mega sloth. I kind of like always have my colonists lined up with their guns uh, ready to shoot that thing down if it goes aggro because there are a couple of things in this game which will never grow harmless no matter how strong your colony is a mega sloth in melee is one of those even if your colonist is wearing power armor it's nothing to trifle with so therefore safety first this is a general sentiment for this game if you can avoid your people getting wounded then then avoid it always even if it's meaning more micromanagement, even if it's uh, going to be a tad bit annoying, it's basically always worth the pain. Because, you know, when people get wounded in this game, there can, there can be all manner of crazy things happening. Infections, which you need to treat and which uh, 
get your colonist out of business for a couple of days. Lost limbs, which reduce the total effectiveness of certain work types, and also just outright instantaneous death if the things just go unlucky. There's so many things making it uh, worthwhile to 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 have a risk minimizing playstyle in this game. It's quite uh, it's quite recommendable to emphasize it like that. Because here in this game, whenever somebody loses a limb, it's permanent, and you need to patch up prosthetics there. There's also no way for those folks to regain their natural limbs ever again, so take that serious. Especially with the wildlife in general, there's one thing worth mentioning. If there are several animals standing together, also, if you try to tame them, both go aggro. Not when you only when you attack them, but if you would try to tame those rhinos and one of them would go angry because of that, both of them would go angry because of that. And therefore, seriously, be careful. This is uh, this is really dangerous. But sadly, it's also the way of acquiring powerful animal companions for combat. So if you are interested in those things. You need to suffer through that but i think i already mentioned a trick or two which you can go for so we're going to put a roof area on top of that you can always force your people with the build roof area command to do this just like this and now we have the animal the animal bed zone there so i'm going to put down straw matting because i really i really feel like it fits there and now we're going to put down some animal beds Let's make that light leather and issue some more hunting jobs. So, because there's lots of little vermin running around there. So, there's a turkey outside there. Also worth mentioning, a lot of animals have resources to gather. For example, here alpacas, they have alpaca wool too. The turkeys can yield eggs. And the boomalo boomalopes yield chem fuel. It's really worth checking out the animals in general and see what they can offer. There's also one thing I forgot to mention here. Some animals have a check mark on pack animal, like the donkeys. This means that you can use the animal's carrying capacity in caravans when you're traveling across the world to do trading. So that's also a pretty nifty thing to do to have a few caravan animals which carry heavy things for you when you want to trade things. Because, you know, it's always good to have a certain trading capacity in your colony. We're going to talk about trading in another episode. So now you know pretty much of the basics of the animal handling system in this game. There's, of course, more of that to know. Hey, cargo pods came down from the sky and they brought me free steel. I love it. One last thing worth mentioning about animals in your uh, biome, which I haven't talked about yet. If these animals are predators, so predator, predators are all the animals which have these uh, little icon here. This means they eat meat as a primary way of sustaining themselves. This also means that if there is no smaller game than humans, they will hunt humans. This also means that if there's no smaller game than Tom the Yorkshire Terrier, they will also hunt Tom the Yorkshire Terrier. So these things are really worth keeping in mind that predators can be a big, re a real big risk for your own. So we're being betrayed by our refugees, which is really, really sad, but that's one of the possible events, uh, one of the possible outcomes of the refugee event. So we'll have to fight this off. So when that happens, you have all of a sudden people in your colony which are not on your side anymore. So the real big issue about that is they are all over the place. Ray is now going to attack the dog. And we see here Hubbard is uh, starting to put the workshop on fire. Both things are really, really un unacceptable. So we'll have to change that. 
So Tom just got stabbed away by uh, this uh, by this uh, nasty attack. So we'll have to. Yeah. Okay. So here Pi can't move on that square. That's happening because somebody else is already trying to move on that square. So sadly, there will be no chance whatsoever for us to save our um, to save our workshop. I think. So Hubbard is going crazy on that. Let's see if that fire will spread. Meanwhile, I'll send Bubbles inside there. She uh, she slowed down Ray, and maybe I'll get lucky. And oh yeah, Hubbard is going to flee. That's good. So we're going to hold open that door. So Bubble, so Hubbard can run out, and we're going to extinguish that fire. There we go. So Ray didn't survive this one. Maybe we can down Hubbard. And we have lost, what did we lose here? Our tailoring bench, didn't we? Yes. That's very, very unfortunate. So down here is that hammer symbol, and this is uh, for the automatic rebuilding of destroyed structures. One of my favorite things, because this does uh, make sure that we don't need to uh, work on to to think about these things manually right now i just remembered what kind of uh, workbench was missing but uh maybe i won't next time you know all right neither hubbard nor bubbles made it out alive keep in mind here this was one this was my steel knife here hubbard uh, picked it up here in this uh, area and uh went forward with that. So we had traders, we took care of them, we're going to build some nice graves there for them, and that's going to be the end of today's episode. I thank you guys so much for watching, we had a pretty deep, uh, we had a pretty deep trip into the animal section here, and a very tragic end, poor Tom, really sad about that. He was also bonded with one of my people, and uh, I think, I don't know who was it again? Defended, defeated hostile leader Hubbard and uh, hostile leader Ray. Okay. So, here. Bubbles will now be unhappy for 20 days because bonded animal Tom died. All these things, and RimWorld is full of things that uh, influence the mood of your people. Weirdly enough, Bubbles doesn't mind at all that we're going to put good old Tom to good use here. Don't ask. So, thanks for watching. Drop your comments down below if there's any questions left. Just ask away. I know this was a pretty, uh, was a lot of new information, so feel free to go deeper into that topic if you want to. And also leave a thumbs up on that video if you liked it. And of course, subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications if you want to stay tuned with my daily content. Also down there in the description box, you'll find my Twitch channel where I do daily streams. And last but not least, check out my support links down there. There's Patreon and other stuff. You might want to check that out. I'd be super happy. If not, let me thank you one more time for watching this video because that's very, very awesome of you. Have a good time and see you soon. Bye-bye.